All right, uh, my name is Victor. I'm Avi. And today we'll be presenting FearNet. So what's a big deal? So every single day, billions of pictures are shared across internet users uh, online. And due to the sheer volume of this data, it's often very difficult to process and filter through all of the images. And as a result, one of our motivations behind our project is to be able to provide a safe and more personalized online web browsing experience when it comes to images. Uh, we aim to attain this by providing a solution that was able to classify user-specified phobias in images. Uh, there's a lot of phobias to look, potential phobias to look out for, and a lot of, and a variety of uh, potential triggers within each phobia. So for some phobias, the trigger is something very concrete, like uh, spiders or snakes. Other times, it's something a bit more abstract, like confinement. Um, other phobias we've looked uh, that include blood, uh, dogs, heights, and death. Um, now, somebody with one of these phobias will not necessarily have all the others. So in addition to making the classifier, we've also made a graphical interface um, which allows people to select which uh, types of phobic content they would like to filter for. Um, and there's a, we have a second interface uh, which, when a photo has, uh, when, a, when a phobia has been, de uh, phobic content has been detected in a photo, it uh, warns the user, gives them the phobia that's in question and the uh, confidence S of the, of the uh, detection and uh, also gives them the option to show the image anyway if they would like. Um, our data is sourced from uh, online collections of images relating to common phobias. Uh, we've got about uh, between 200 and 1,000 images per phobia and uh, as well as about 300 images that we don't think will trigger any common phobias. Um, data sets have to be curated to remove noise that ends up in it. Some of that noise is just due to features of the websites. For example, uh, uh, profile uh, website logos or profile photos. Uh, we'll, um, other times, it's uh, something that's sort of tangentially related to the phobia that might end up in the set but isn't necessarily triggering itself. For example, when we looked for photos of spiders, we found the collection sometimes had photos from Spider-Man comics, which aren't, them, which aren't uh, themselves typically triggering. Um, our model works on the assumption that each image, the simplifying assumption that each image, uh, that an image can only trigger one phobia at most. So the model that our architecture is based upon is a transparent learning ensemble. Uh, so the input image is a 128 by 128 image that's resized uh, with three channels RGB. Uh, we have we use eight different unique uh, transfer learned computer vision models, including ResNet, VGG, DenseNet, AlexNet, ShuffleNet, etc. Each of these transfer models are then uh, fine tuned to our data set with their last layer unfrozen, as well as an external fully connected layer attached to the back of them. Each of these transfer learning models are then independently trained on the training set uh, uh, in order to output a classification vector. And uh, classification vectors from all eight transfer learning ensembles are then concatenated together and passed in as an input to a separate multilayered perceptron that is then separately trained. The output of this MLP, which is uh, composed of two uh, fully connected layers, uh, is then softmaxed in order to represent the probabilities of the uh, phobia being in the image. So the testing results from this ensemble was surprisingly well. Uh, reaching a testing accuracy of 97.27% and a recall score of 97.52%. And at this point, I'd like to uh, emphasize that we chose to look at recall score primarily because we're more worried about false negatives, uh, simply because in this case, if we're to misclassify a phobia that, uh, or an image that had a phobia as not having a phobia, uh, that would be more detrimental than uh, the other way around, in which case a user would simply be missing out con on content that uh, they would, would not have been able to see. The hyperparameters were largely taken from previous assignments nothing special there, and the prediction was simply taken as a maximum index of the output vector with a, ma uh, with a maximum uh, probability. And the recall scores were calculated across, uh, every, uh, across all classes uh, once every single epoch. And so here are some uh, graphs pertaining to the, uh, the validation uh, accuracy and the losses uh, with respect to the baseline, the individual transfer learning networks, as well as the ensemble network. And so uh, from here we can see that the uh, transfer individual transfer learned networks actually pretend, uh, performed decently well. Uh, however, the ensemble network, uh, combining, the, combining all eight networks, was able to perform even better. Um, the baseline model was a simple convolutional neural net architecture that was used in assignment four, uh, with four convolutional layers as well as four fully connected layers. As we can see, that it struggled to uh, attain better, uh, a, a, a decent performance. And here are some graphs pertaining to the recall score telling a similar story. 
Here's our confusion matrix. We chose to use a normalized confusion matrix because there was a high variance in the number of samples between each phobia. Um, and from this confusion matrix, we can see that the most confused pair was on, uh, near the lower left, where we have uh, mistaken holes for skin defects. And upon cleaning the data, we found that this was uh, actually reasonable because it turns out that a lot of the uh, training samples for skin defects were like moles and pimples that had very similar features as what was seen in the holes data set. The least accurate category was also holes. Um, and we suspect that this was due to the fact that holes had the lowest training samples out of every single sample, having a total set of around 177 pictures. And the most accurate categories were uh, skin defects, water, and birds. Um, so um, to our surprise, the category accuracy is not, the accuracy of the model on a particular category does not seem particularly well correlated with the size of the data set. Um, and our model gets very high accuracy in classifying even the more abstract phobias. Individual transfer models perform, the individual transfer models themselves perform decently, but ensembling leads to clear and uh, noticeable imp um, and significant improvements. Um, so That's it. What? Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, thank you. This is nicely put together, actually, well explained, and interesting, and uh, a little unique, actually, in terms of its topic. Um, I think you answered the key question I had, which was uh, it almost when the slide on your results showing the accuracy for the individual model. So you took each individual pre trained model and threw it into the MLP and just and trained that. Yes. And it was still, those are still reasonably accurate. Yes. Um, but, but, but then you threw them all in and then you get that yeah. one number, but you don't know which ones actually got you there. So you, yeah. yeah, so we, we actually did another ensemble where we simply averaged the, instead of using an MLP, and that one ended up with a, uh, so 86% uh, accuracy, testing accuracy, so that was only uh, average the, the so average the feature so, vector. Yes, so instead of passing into the MLP, uh, all 18... Yeah, so that wasn't going anywhere near that question. I understand what you're saying, but uh, the, the real question is, do you need all of them or do you just need a couple of them? Uh, uh, yeah, so that um, would be the scientific question that right. comes out of this, I guess. Yeah, so I, I think one of the future steps would actually be uh, reducing the amount of computational power needed. For example, restraining it to maybe only a couple more lighter architectures, like restraining it to AlexNet and ShuffleNet. Uh, because if this was to actually be deployed in the real world, we would expect real time performance or real time sure. usage and, of it. And you would uh, absolutely. That. And there's a scientific question here. Yeah. You, did, you threw them all in and you go, well, do you need all of them? That's what, okay. that's what if this was a master's world, that's what we'd be asking. You know? okay. You really need all of this, but I think it's really interesting. Uh, Mike? Um, yeah, it's nice to see that it worked well despite the class and That's pretty good. Uh, it, but it was a rather odd decision to show all those triggering images uh, without warning people in a project where your plan is to warn people about triggering images. Uh, yeah. So just a presentation comment. That's an interesting choice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we chose to make it a bit more interesting. I mean, there were, we actually originally had a, a few kind of unsafe images in there, but then we kind of moved those. You mean more disturbing. Yeah, yeah more disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was mean, dedicating those. Uh, no, it's a good point. Um, it went through there quickly, so hopefully people were protected, but uh, talk to me if you need help. Um, <laughs> no, I mean that. Um, any other questions? Great, well done. Thank you.